Ginny, you're going to drive me insane tonight. <laughs> I love you, sweetheart, but you are going to drive me absolutely bonkers. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> What's going on? Um, so I am doing this live tonight, not from my usual spot where I usually do the farm meetings in my office, but I'm actually in the new barn um, up on the second floor, pretty close to actually where the hatchery is. Um, I figured I'd change things up tonight and uh, do something different. And we're actually just starting to get a storm. So like I was just doing the chores and it was like, freezing rain and it's supposed to switch over to snow later tonight um so i don't know this might have been a poorly thought through thing but i figured I'd, I'd give it a shot what's going on everybody good to see everybody also fair warning i don't like so when i usually do the live stream i have like a gigantic monitor and lots going on i'm working from my laptop tonight so uh it's a little tricky what's going on Lindsay? good to see you hey sharon how are you from canada What's going on, Ram Noodle? Yeah, we're getting more snow. I think, I don't know, they're saying it's supposed to be about a foot, like, overnight and into tomorrow morning um, is sort of what I'm hearing. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right, Sarah. So, um, just so everybody knows, there will be no little barn cat tonight. She is not joining us. Um, but, uh, but we do have Ginny Barn Cat, who... We'll probably knock over the camera at some point. We'll probably annoy me to the point where I have to like pick her up and move her out of the way. But yes, you do get plenty of Ginny Barncat in tonight's live stream. <laughs> What's going on, Jack? Good to see you, buddy. By the way, shout out to our moderators as always. These would not be possible without them. Um, uh, uh oh, yeah, Ginny's already trying to bump the camera. Gin, stop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Katrina? Possible. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. So everybody's got snow kind of hunkering in. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's felt like it's kind of fun to do. Um, things are good here on the farm. Um, you know, it's funny. We got a big snowstorm and I will post a video all about that tomorrow. Um, and then uh, <laughs> justice for Lil Barncat. Look, Ramen Noodle, Lil Barncat is in my office right now, sleeping inside. Um, uh oh, Ginny and Pablo will also probably fight here. She's sleeping in my office in her cat tree, so she's a very happy cat. No justice needed. Hey, Diane, good to see you down in White River Junction. Um, so yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so the snow, yeah. So we got a snowstorm last weekend, and the video that I post tomorrow is all about that. Um, this weekend. I don't know. It's probably going to all melt, but we're supposed to get a, uh, about a foot overnight tonight. Oh, well, I, T. Ferris, I'm really glad you guys found us, and I am really appreciative of it. Uh, so, Julie, moderators, what they do is basically, you know, there's, what, like 400 people between the live streams right now. And um, so, so, like... They help manage the comments if we get trolls or spam or anything like that. Help me deal with all that. And yeah, they're just super appreciative. Hey, Drew, good to see you. The very talented photographer Drew is there. We just got, oh, wow. Oh, Wisconsin just got, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good whopper. Yeah. Wow, you're in Saigon, John. That's pretty crazy. Okay, Bob Neely asks, who do I watch on YouTube? That's a good question. Um, let's see. Uh, well, first off, I'm a big fan of all of our moderators. So like Jack at the Mindful Homestead and uh, who else? Um, uh, you know, definitely Katrina over at um, So and Tear, um, Kathy at North Star Prep Center, Rose over at Wholesome Roots. I'm not sure who's here, who's not. So I don't, I, did, I didn't mention you guys, please, by all means. But so, so definitely check out their channels. But in terms of other YouTubers that I really like, um, well, I'm a really big fan of Greg Judy, who's a cattle rancher down in Missouri. Um, I am loving my, my friend Jess Soward's new cooking channel, The, the Farmer's Table. Uh, that's a great one. But then if you're looking for like non-farm like and homesteading related, um, 
honestly, one of my like new favorite YouTube channels is is this person uh, by the name CJ the X, and what they do is they do um, like really good like video essays on art and creativity and culture and social media. And, and I don't know if you guys are watching my other channel, you know that those are all big interests of mine. Um, uh, so yeah. Will not follow. Not good. I don't know what's wrong. LB Strider. <laughs> are you talking about me or Greg Judy or CJ, the X? I don't, I don't know. I'm wondering. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I hope, I hope everything's okay. Hello there, Deborah. Good to see you. Wow, Anne in Glasgow and Carol in Tucson. Oh, so, wee oui, wee, oui, no calves yet. I was actually just doing another check um, while I was out uh, getting uh, the chores done. And uh, yeah, um, so far things are looking okay. Um, everybody's looking good, but no calves have been born just yet. Will I try to allow the ducks and geese to hatch their own eggs again? Um, so I will definitely let the ducks hatch their own eggs again. They've been doing pretty good, particularly the Cayugas over the last couple of years. So they will probably somewhere in the pasture make a spot and one or two mamas are going to be sneaky and they're going to have some eggs. And I'm happy to just kind of let them do that. Um, as far as the geese go, no, I'm actually going to really actively try to avoid having them hatch out any of their own. I just find that I have such higher success rate um, with the geese if I hatch them myself. And so I'm actually collecting eggs right now. And probably this time next week, I will actually be putting all of those eggs in the incubator and starting the hatches. And so, uh, yeah, you will see goose hatching in like early mid May uh, will be when you start to see those pop up and those will be the first. And then once I'm done with geese, I will switch over to do a bunch of chickens this year too. Um, and the weird chickens will be hatching their own as well. Hey, voice cat. I'm glad you joined. <clears throat> well, Donna, it's raining. I don't know if you guys can hear it in here, but like, it's, it's definitely hitting the roof here. It's definitely raining right now. <laughs> Ginny. <laughs> oh, they're putting ads in live videos now. I didn't, I didn't honestly, guys, I, don't have control over that. And so I did not know that they were putting like, particularly, and this, this looks like this one's on Facebook. I did not know that. Apologies, guys. It's, it kind of is what it is. What's up? There? I think that's, when you're saying the green glare, I think you're just talking about, I, I have a light there and it's, it's like a green light on here. If you want to see it. Oh, I'm actually not even using that camera. See, you can see it right there. It's just the light. Is it glare? I just, I think it's like a tin. I just feel like it's an accent light. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, I'm realizing I'm on the wrong camera. I'm actually not on the good camera. And is it which? Oh, it's use my AirPods for the audio, which is what I wanted. But uh, here, wait. Let's, let me see if I can do this. Does this look any better? Ooh, does that look better? That should look better. That's the better camera. I I realize again. This is me switching up like my setup here tonight. Um, it used like the, the camera for my laptop instead of, uh, the webcam that I have here. So hopefully that's a little bit better. Ginny is like trying to burrow into my stomach. I don't know what's going on there. She's just happy. I think that I'm out here hanging out. Have you ever had any Bigfoot noises or type encounters? Carlos, no, because there's no such thing as a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch. Um, except there is actually... It's funny. Um, my buddy Alfred, when we were finishing up this barn, he actually hid a Sasquatch, like a like a wooden cutout of a Sasquatch, up in the rafters of the barn. And so, if you have eagle eyes and you know where to look for it, um, you can actually see that Sasquatch. Um, all right, Vale Cat is asking for a barn cat update. Well, I mean, first barn cat I will talk about is Ginevra here, and she's doing good. I think Ginny's going to try to get the rat. Like, if I didn't know any better. I'm noticing that she's staking out the area and, and I don't know, there's a chance she could get it. Um, but yeah. Useless farm. Oh, I love useless farm. Is she here? Oh yeah. Amanda's rad. I'm 
Why is he muted? Can you guys hear me? It seems like you guys can hear me. Um, I'm hoping you guys can hear me. I bet Avery, oh no, Ginny. <laughs> like I said, I knew she was gonna do that at some point. Pablo's here. Um, oh, Pablo's actually down. He's, he's hanging on some of the, the floor joists right now. Uh, yeah. What is my favorite thing about homesteading? Um, I mean, honestly, I, I really love being able to work with the animals and watching the impact the animals have on the land. If I was going to probably pick one thing to say it was my favorite, that might be it for me. We're still working on something, Ramen Noodle. There, there's some tricky things because, you know, she's in Canada. And so, like, getting stuff across the border is a little bit more complicated. But I, hopefully when the weather turns nicer, something might happen. So stay tuned there. Hey, well, Sam Burke, I am glad you were able to hop on the live. It's good to see you. Love watching the farm, all about the homestead channels. That's awesome, Heather. Okay. Are you having problems with other creatures? I mean, yeah, I think everybody has Facebook problems. That's just sort of what it is. When's the next 24-hour live stream? Wow, Sarah, I don't know if there's ever going to be another. That was a hard stretch, especially because it was like, I mean, I had people call in and, and stuff, but like it was me like doing like it was it was a lot to do. And I even kind of passed out at a certain point uh, just to sleep because <laughs> I needed like two or three hours of sleep or else I was going to go crazy. Um, but I don't know if there's a good cause that comes up and, and something that that I think makes sense for it, I, I would do it again. Uh, you guys were asking about Pablo. Pablo just hopped up on my table. So I bet it'll be a minute or two before. Um, yeah. Okay, D hears me good, which is good. And good to see you, D. Always appreciate you being here. How's Ginny Barncat doing? Well, you just saw. <laughs> She's doing great. I, I mean, Guadalupe, it, there's a lot to do, a fair amount to do, but it's not too bad. Um, uh oh, now Pablo's going to try to attack the webcam. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not too bad. I mean, I will admit, I get tired like on the live streams because I'm usually. Like I try to wind down by like nine o'clock and, and then like by you know ten o'clock try to go to bed. Um because I'm I'm usually up rather early. Uh so so I always admit like the the live streams from that perspective are always tricky because like I usually try to do it in the evening because that's when most people can do it. And uh uh yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm having fun hanging out. So we'll keep hanging out here tonight for as long as we can do. Oh, by the way, in case anybody's wondering, I do have my Worcester water of the night. It's my favorite flavor, orange vanilla. Um, yeah. Oh, Elena, you loved – well, Toby Dog and Abby Dog are doing good. I just fed them dinner. Um, they seem like they're hanging out in their shed uh, to try to stay dry because it's it, – like I said, it's nasty outside right now. It's like I'm hearing it come down. It's like hard rain, freezing rain right now, and that's no fun, even if you're a dog. Okay, I'm jumping past questions that I think I answered already. Yes, uh, Veil Cat. All of my barn cats are spayed or neutered. Um, and I actually believe that if you are going to own an outdoor cat, and, and you really shouldn't just have outdoor cats just for the sake of it, but if you're going to own an outdoor cat, you absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have the responsibility of making sure that that cat does not reproduce. And so, uh, yeah, both, but, you know, Ginny and Lil are... Uh, spade and Pablo is neutered. So yes, to answer your question. Gina, you know, it's an interesting question. So maybe someday, I don't know, like I really would love to breed Toby, but I also don't want to add a dog to the farm just solely for breeding. That does not make sense for the farm. And so that's why you guys haven't seen me rush to do that right now anyway. Um, it, and, and just, I don't know, I, I feel like that's a, a real ethical choice. Um, but if there was like somebody local that we could breed him with, I would, I would jump on that in a heartbeat um, for sure. Um, and I don't know, maybe in a couple of years, I, I might have a need for another dog. Uh, but right now, no, I have no intention of like getting a dog just for breeding purposes. 
We sell merch, Stephanie. You can find it at uh, goldshawfarm.com. Uh, it's probably the easiest place to go. Uh, there's probably links. Uh, well, actually, you're on Facebook, so there's not links. But on our YouTube channels, there, there's usually links as well. Um, and uh, all right, I'm going to give this one up to you guys. I'm actually working on a secret new uh, hat design and a new shirt design. So that'll be coming very soon. Um, so stay tuned for that. Hey, what's up, Heinlein? Two or three herds this summer. Um, there will be two herds. So I'm, I'm pretty much 100% that the split of the herds for the cattle this year are going to be all the moms, all the calves, and macho man in the upper pasture. And then in the lower pasture, I'm going to have Joey Ramone, um, Baby B, and uh, Alice B. Toklas. And so the the two heifer calves, the yearling heifer calves that I have, I'm going to separate them out from the herd this spring when I go set everybody out to pasture, um, just because I don't want to have them bred. And uh, Macho Man's going to probably go in. I don't know. I'd say like late June is is when I usually try to what I want to try to get him together with. Um, excuse me, now I'm tired because of that question. <laughs> um, and and so uh, that that is going to be the plan this year, and so it'll be split into two. Um, uh, also I'll say Belinda Carlisle and Bonnie McMurray, who were separate from the herd last year, they're going to be in with the main herd this year. So Tim, I actually, so since all the snow melted, but I knew it was going to snow again tonight, I decided to go on a bike ride around the farm earlier today. Ginny, don't do that. <laughs> and, um, I, I actually went around, I picked up some trail camera cards, um, didn't get any, uh, bear footage on the trail cams. But I did see uh, one big sizable pile of bear scat. And uh, from all indications I'm getting, they're starting to wake up right about now. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll see bear on the farm soon. How does Lil make power if she can't wear a <laughs> um, Well, Lil, she is an expert biscuit maker. And so she does not make power, but she makes, she makes uh, uh, biscuits. Oh, Madeline, I am ready for the eclipse. And actually, I, I guess I have an announcement for everybody uh, that's worth talking about. So I'm going to be posting a video on Monday, which is when the eclipse is happening. But it's going to be posted later than my usual posting time because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a special video showing you guys the animal's reaction to the eclipse. And so I think it's scheduled to be like, I don't know, 2, 30, 3 o'clock, something like that. And so um, – I will edit the video and post it that night. And so I'm going to guess it's probably going to be around eight o'clock, seven, eight o'clock at night before that video gets posted. Um, but there will be a video on Monday, but it will be later than usual because of the eclipse. And so I'm hoping it's going to be a fun video to make. And so uh, stay tuned for that. That will happen. Um, and I don't know, people are, are really around here, like getting very anxious about the eclipse and the amount of traffic because the spot that we're in, in like St. Johnsbury, which is, I don't know, about 20 minutes away. And it's kind of like the, the big local, big local town. It's like a town of 5,000 people, but like, that's, <laughs> that is like the, if we're going into town, that's where you go. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that, that will be the thing that, um, gets a lot of attention and they're expecting like, I don't know, I've seen estimates between 150 and 200,000 people coming to Vermont, particularly Northern Vermont, which is usually a very quiet place. Um, particularly this time of year. So it, it should be very interesting. I don't, I don't know what to expect. When I was living in Washington, D.C., I remember seeing the eclipse. It uh, was like 2017. And that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I had a very early morning too this morning, so apologies. Um, but yeah, that, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. And I, I'm really looking forward to being able to share it with you guys too. All right. You guys want to see Pablo Barnett Because he's now sitting in a pretty good place. I don't know if you can see him. He's out back there in the corner. See? Say hi, Pablo. He doesn't want to say hi. <laughs> um, all right. So what other questions do we have? Oh, yeah. Jennifer, I am using the table that I built uh, in that video a couple weeks ago. I'm, that is exactly what I am sitting on or sitting at, I should say, right now. That is, I am on that table as we speak. It's actually been a great table. I am so happy I built it. I'm actually very happy with how it turned out. Um, I'm not happy with what's going on with the webcam. But uh, yeah, the, the table whole situation worked out great. Melcat, come on. <laughs> I always read comments. All right. 
Oh, Mark, you know, I'm, I'm working on this one. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to keep the crows away. Um, and I still don't have a great solution, but, uh, uh, yeah, that's what I got. Hey, Debbie, what's going on? Um, why did you let the rat video end on a cliffhanger? Because there is no ending to it. Like, like literally as of, uh, you know, at around seven o'clock, I was doing the evening chores and setting the rat traps for the night. <laughs> so I, you know, I, part of me was like, oh, I could just like keep recording that. And I honestly, that video would be like three weeks worth of recording at this point. Um, and so I just kind of ended it where I did just, just, just cause. I don't know. I think I think it did annoy some people that it like. I don't know. Sometimes real life. It, all right. Let me compose my thoughts here on this one. Okay. So when you're making videos about your real life and trying to tell people stories about your real life while it's happening, sometimes you have a nice, clean, tidy ending, and you can just like put it to get bed and like boom. There is no cliffhanger. There, there's good resolution. Has everything you want for in a good, complete story. But the thing is, when you are making videos about your real life and trying to like just show what's going on, sometimes you don't have clean answers and sometimes you don't have resolution. And, and so I know that that can be frustrating for people, but you know, I mean, that's, I guess that's the trade off you get in watching something like what's happening on our farm versus like say a show on Netflix. Not that there's anything wrong with showing on Netflix. Okay. Speaking of shows on Netflix, even though this is actually a show on Disney plus, I have been going down the X-Men animated series rabbit hole for the first time in, I don't know, 20 something, something years. Like I remember it debuting when I was a kid, like, I don't know, probably was like 11 or 12. And at the time I was wicked into X-Men comics. Um, and you know, that's like the Jim Lee, uh, Scott Lobdell, um, uh, Adam Kubert, Andy Kubert, like, like all of those eras, like, like, I don't know, like, early nineties X-Men was like peak X-Men. Like they were super, super popular back then. And the animated series I used to watch. And even as I was a teenager and I gave up watching most other cartoons, I remember still being like almost even in high school and watching the X-Men cartoon. Cause I was, I was such a big fan, um, but I hadn't seen it in years. And now that they are bringing that cartoon back in X-Men 97, which I thought was wonderful. Um, and I know there's a new episode that just came out today that I, I will probably watch after this live stream. Um, I was so pumped on, on watching that. And so, uh, yeah, if you're out there and you have Disney plus, I highly recommend going through and watching it. Um, <clears throat> Bruno asks, are you ever going to post Saturday videos? Okay. So, so for those who don't know, so I used to do for a couple of years, I was doing three videos a week where I do a Monday, a Thursday and a Saturday video. But at the beginning of this year, I stopped doing that. And, and the reason is because I actually started a whole new YouTube channel and I just knew it was going to be unrealistic for me to try to do three videos on the Goldshaw Farm channel plus a new video, you know, and I'm not doing like one video per week on the new channel, but I'm usually doing a couple videos a month. And those videos are like wicked, wicked complicated to make. I'm going to actually, hang on, I'm going to show you, because like if you haven't had a chance to watch this one, I, I'm super proud of this video and would love for everybody to watch it if they can. Um, it's a video called hang on a sec hold on hold on hold on present hang on oh hang on oh i can't share my screen right now um <laughs> because unfortunately uh yeah i, I didn't enable screen sharing on this laptop and that's a whole complicated thing, but yes, I'm going to drop a, a link for the YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, it, it basically, those videos show up there and they, you know, they, so you're probably getting as many, if not more videos, because those videos tend to be a lot longer too, um, on this new channel, it's called Morgan gold. And like the, the video I just put out, uh, last week was the title of it is I'm, I was the only Jew in Catholic school and it's me basically telling stories about my experiences in a Catholic high school. And um, I like try to bring like scenes to life by doing like a whole bunch of animation that I actually did all, I got a lot of questions on this. I did all the animation myself in that video. Um, so everything you see in that video from the animation to the writing, to the voices, like it was hundred percent me. Um, <clears throat> but that's a lot of work. 
So when you ask like, why aren't you doing Saturday videos? The reason is it's because I'm doing those videos. And I don't know if I'm gonna do this forever. Um, I'm having so much fun making those videos for that other channel. And I'm finding it just so rewarding that, um, I don't know, I, it's kind of why I, I like doing it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> like, I, I don't know, I'm gonna keep doing it that way, at least for the time being. And I hope you guys watch that video. If you haven't, definitely check it out. It's, I, I think it's a good video. It's probably not like a great video for like little kids to watch, but I actually very intentionally tried to make it so that it would be okay for like uh, teenagers to watch. Um, because I don't know, I feel like there's some messages I try to communicate in it that, I don't know, I would hope were good for them. Can I make TikTok and promote? I mean, I don't know. It, it depends on what you mean by that, what happened. <clears throat> Have you thought about including new animals like quail or turkey, maybe adding new pigs as well? So we will be getting pigs this year. Um, probably the end of this month. I, th I think it's going to be the end of this month. Might be the first week of August. Um, or August. First week of uh, May, sorry. Um, that we're going to like get uh, pigs. But we will be getting more pigs than we had last year. Uh, I think it's going to end up being five. Um, I might do turkeys. I might not. I don't know. Part of me doesn't think it makes sense. I'm going to be spending a lot of time hatching birds and uh, such. <laughs> so there, there'll be a lot of that too. Yeah, Drew, I know. <laughs> she's just so cuddly. I think she's so excited and happy to just have me out here hanging out tonight um, because this is not a usual occurrence uh, that I think that's where it comes. Oh, I'm so, I am. Oh my gosh, guys. I apologize. I am like so behind on questions i'm realizing um i almost believe monday's video <laughs> i'm glad you guys almost believed it I, so i will tell you i was a little bit nervous about this because like last year i feel like i did too good a job with my april fools video because there are so many people who like even to this day like think that that video was real and that i was like faking it all um but but honestly good is like it was so much fun to make, but yeah, I kind of regret that video. I was worried that this would cause problems. It seems like Monday's video was like good, clean, fun, and nobody got too concerned about it. So, yeah. Green light causes weird things and make people sick. It's better now with the other camera. Yeah, you know, so here's what happened. So when I was setting up and lighting everything, because, you know, it's dark, it's pitch black, and, and the, the barn, particularly the upper level, doesn't have lights. Um, and so, you know, I bring some lights in just so it's, it's dark and it was just grabbing from the wrong camera, which is why it was like so harsh. So apologies. Oh, wait, is Danny here? Hey, Danny, what's up? <laughs> Ginny is trying to like burrow into me. I, it is the most adorable and annoying thing at the same time. Now the side opposite the green looks purple. Like, well, that... I actually try when I do the lighting to make it look interesting. So it's just for the record. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm so far behind. I'm jumping ahead. So unfortunately, Laura, we do not uh, frequently have visitors. There's a couple times a year where like for certain charities, I'll auction off a visit where people can come. Or if you buy a goose from us, you can come up to the farm in the fall. But just it gets to be too tricky to try to manage it and make it fair for folks if they want to like come and visit. And there was a point where we we're just getting so many visitors, it's like hard to like do the farm work. And so um, as of right now, we don't do uh, just like regular visits. But like I said, there'll be a couple times a year where we auction off visits. And um, if you buy, actually, if you buy geese, like like a goose or pork from us this year, you'll be able to come to the farm. Um, and I actually we're, we'll also have beef too. And so we will be doing like setting up times for people to do like customer pickups. And so if you do that, you get to come up to the farm. I'll give you a little tour. You can probably, you know, meet Ginny and Pablo and Toby and Abby and see the animals and all that good stuff. Um, so, so that's pretty much how it works, but we don't do just like regular old visits. And I know it's tough because like, like a nine year old kid, I'd love to have, it's just, how do I make it fair? And we, it's like, I'm trying to balance some things with that. <clears throat> Oh, well, I really appreciate you saying that, Lisa. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm definitely feeling the Ginny effect. 
<laughs> yeah, I hope Ginny gets that rat. I, I wish she was out there doing that right now. <clears throat> You know, Jeff, I don't know. It's it's frustrating a little bit, but I also, I don't know, I don't want to get me down too much. I think if you let, like, the number of people watching a video be the thing that, like, drives your happiness, it will make you insane. And believe me, I say that just because there was a time when I was very much focused on it. And, and now, not so much. And uh, I don't know. It's very freeing and liberating. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> So Jaden, I won't do a live stream because I think it'll actually be kind of boring. Like all the interesting things about the eclipse won't be like something I can show just like on a live stream, but I will shoot a video. I've got actually even special camera filters. Um, and so I'll be doing it that way. Okay, I'm just driving through comments here. Oh, you're up in Oregon. That's cool, Katrina. Can you see more Ralph the Duck? Okay, David, I will, in the next video I shoot, which will be, I don't know, I don't, I'm not shooting tomorrow, but the next day, um, I, will sh I will showcase some more Ralph just for you, David. Hey, Rose, good to see you. Hey, Cormac, good to see you. How are you doing? Hey, Cormac, um, if you have a link to your podcast oh wait you're not gonna be able to see it so i did a, uh, a, a podcast with cormac a little while back it was a good conversation um just definitely check it out if you guys are looking for something to listen to um so yeah oh you want yeah i might do that if i don't know if people want want i can easily get some guests and like hang out and shoot the breeze with folks because it actually makes it easier for me to be honest <laughs> Yeah, we've got all the mods here now. This is awesome. Good to see everybody. I don't know. I always like hanging out like this. This is fun. How old are Toby, Abby, and the Barn Cats? All right, let me run. I'm going to go through them by order of age. So our oldest is Pablo Barn Cat, and he is 10 years old now. He's he's getting up there. Um, then the next is Lil Barn Cat. She was born in 2018, and so... She actually just last week celebrated her uh, sixth birthday. Um, let's see. Who else we got? Uh, Toby Dog is five years old. He'll be turning six at the end of this year. Um, wait, no. No, wait, I got that wrong. He was uh, November or September of 2019. So he's, he's going to be turning five years old this year. My apologies. Um, <laughs> then we have Ginny who, uh, let's see, she was born in May of 2021. So she's three years old almost. And, uh, then we have, uh, Abby dog who was, uh, I think October of 2021. So, uh, there you go. <clears throat> raspberry lime, raspberry lime's a good one there. Pola. <laughs> Drinking wicked lots of polo, kid. Yeah, I, I love the orange vanilla. It's it's that it is my favorite. Where are the cows calving? Um, in the barn. So or around the barn. Um, so th the way the setup for the cows is so the 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 cow yard, the female yard, um, has a lot of space, and I can subdivide it, and I have like a whole bunch of panels ready to go to subdivide as needed. But basically, I can create like little corrals and um, section off if I need to, or I can like run them through the chute because I have like a squeeze chute there too. Um, and so uh, that, yeah, they're like all in and around the barn is where they are and where they will calve, which is what I've done the last couple of years and it's worked out pretty well. So, oh, so, so, so yeah, Tammy, I am shooting from the, the table I made. Um, how cold is it in the barn in the chicken room? Um, I don't know. So I don't have the heat on inside the, the incubator room, which um, if you're curious, it's like right there. Um, so I, I don't have the heat on in there just yet, um, just because there's no need to run it until I start running the incubators, which will start next week. Um, I don't know. It's, let's see. So it's like, 32 degrees, 33 degrees outside right now. 
Um, I don't know. I guess it's probably like about 40 inside. Uh, it's, it's a little chilly, but not too bad. <clears throat> it's a little chilly to be sitting still. It's so funny how, like, I can be outside working for hours and, like, negative 10 degrees but like if i'm inside and i'm sitting down and not moving around it can just it's just a lot colder no that was actually uh jenny's mom molly uh who went missing and we we still have not she's not turned up so we're assuming she's gone the cows are are actually doing really well overall like everybody's looking really healthy um i haven't had like winter flea problems like i've had in years past um y you know like i'm so amazed with like how far baby b came this winter like i i just tried to work with her pretty much every day and uh i don't know she's just literally eaten out of the palm of my hand and just lets me brush her whatever i want she comes to me it's great it's so it's so rewarding so yeah no cows are doing good yeah, you know, oh, so yeah, they, and there's going to be some new uh, Peach and Barn Cats merch as well coming very, very soon. Yeah, oh, I know. She's like, she's just bouncing around. Like, yeah, she's like, yeah, she's even right back there right now, just hanging out, stealing the show. That's how she rolls. She's a superstar. <laughs> hey liz you're up very late good to see you we gotta catch up yeah i miss chatting with you yeah liz liz zora the great gardener liz zora in the whales <clears throat> oh barbara reed asks good evening morgan how are you doing on your next book well i'm pleased to tell you guys that the uh, Eight Lives of Lil Barn Cat, which is still the working title of it, is the first. It, the draft is complete. I am now uh, actually doing some fine tuning, and I'm going to turn it over to an editor very soon. And then once that happens, it like starts the whole production process and such. I don't think it's going to come out by the end of this year. I'm not going to try to rush it. Uh, I would actually guess it's going to come out early next year. Is the plan? Um, like it, I don't know. Maybe right around this time. I don't know. I, I don't want to but i have finished the second book it is complete like it is done like i wrote the end it's like i'm it's super satisfying um it was like one of my big winter projects uh this and this winter and i'm super happy to have it done i actually got it my goal i told alice in this and i was like i want to finish writing the first draft of this book by april 1st and she's like okay and i finished it on april 1st so i i will take that as a win <laughs> so yeah yeah, Karen, our whole farm is actually powered by the solar co-op in the field right next door to us. Um, so the answer is yes. Hey, Debbie, we're, we're, we're twins. <laughs> Sorry to say that, Diane. Yes. So, so if, if nobody gets the joke on why I call this Worcester water, um, it's Worcester, Massachusetts. So Polar is, is headquartered. And I think they, they can everything in Worcester, Massachusetts. And so my friends and I, we've always just called it Worcester water because we always like to make fun of Worcester. And uh, so that, that is the origin of what that is. <laughs> Sorry to confuse you. <laughs> Your old barn is, is the structure safe? What are you doing in the space? So, so the answer is yes. Like structurally, it's actually in really good shape. Um, it, like it's sound, the footings are good, the the posts and the beams are all good. Like everything's good around it. Um, the lower level I use for like animals, like you know the cattle are in the lower level right now. I also have an area where I store food, um, like the feed for the animals, and uh, then like some equipment and stuff like that. Um, and then the second floor and third floor, I don't really use all that much to be very very honest. Uh, it, it's kind of just it's like habitat for Ginny who actually spends most of her time over here these days. Uh, actually, I'm going to put this out in, in the comments and let's, let's see what you guys said. I'm going to probably jump ahead here to like get the answer. What shirt, who would you like to see on a shirt? If I was going to be designing some new shirts, who would you like to see? The last shirt I did was actually an Abbey chaotic good shirt. So, 
Carmen, are you looking for a, a Toby and Ab Abby sort of like large white farm dog configuration shirt? Um, I'd be very curious to see. So drop it down in the comments, guys. I'd be very curious. Yes, Danny, we are in the totality. I am super excited for that. I, th I think it's going to be very cool. Um, and, and so like I said to everybody, if you missed it earlier, I will be posting a video next Monday. It's going to be later than when I usually post videos because I'm going to actually show you what happens with the eclipse and the animals on the farm as it all happens that afternoon. So I'll post the video that evening. Um, so yes, and, and it will be totality. I'm, I'm excited. We are like right just on the edge. Like, like if you go three or four miles the other way, like technically you're just outside of it. Um, but yeah, we'll have it for like two minutes or so, or a minute and a half. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rose. Yeah, I know. I, I should have drank some like caffeinated beverage beforehand, but then what happens is I get done with this and I'm already amped up from talking to you guys. And then boom, like I try to go to bed and it, like I'm up to like two o'clock and it's not good. Oh, you want the Molly shirt reprint? You, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I've mixed. Uh, so here's the thing. Like, it's actually super emotional for me. Like, I, I was actually just editing a video yesterday. And, like, I, I pulled some old footage. And there was some, like, footage of Molly. And it just, I don't know, it made me sad. I don't know. I, I, I think I'd have a hard time with it just because, I don't know. It would just be, like, this constant sad thing for me. I, I don't know. So the answer is yes. I'm going to see how he does this summer. I might push off his slaughter until early next year. Um, but the answer is eventually yes. See, I haven't seen two or three. Uh, and, and I don't know, maybe it's different in, in New Hampshire. But like here, I feel like they're saying it's like about a good solid foot is the expectation. Um, uh, so yeah. When did you marry Allison? Um, let's see. It was uh, 2011. Um, so, yeah, it's, it was a while ago. Um, yeah, it's crazy how quick time goes. Yeah, so, Dan, you can wait for the story to resolve and tell itself. And sometimes I do do that. But, like, other times it's like, I don't know, do I really, like, start – Here's the question I asked myself because I actually did ask myself this with, about that rat video. Do I make a rat video that I'm basically shooting for a month? Is that going to be something that's interesting for people to watch? And my gut instinct was no. So maybe I was wrong. Uh, I, and I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. Um, but yeah, I know that like, and actually I'm not sure. So in the last rat video, I didn't include this. There is an update of the rats. I think I think it's going to come in tomorrow's video um, where the rat actually got caught in the trap and it shook itself out of the trap. I mean, this is what I mean. that We are not dealing with a standard issue rat. We are dealing with something that's like next level. I don't even know. And so, yeah, I, I agree, Valerie. That was kind of epic. Okay, why have you never thought of turkeys? Well, it's not that I haven't thought of the turkeys. I choose not to get the turkeys, and, and, and the reason is a couplefold. One, if I'm raising turkeys, I have to separate them out from all of my other birds, particularly when they're young, because there's some uh, uh, like uh, uh, illnesses that can get spread back and forth. Um, so that's, that's one issue. The other is like lots of people around here raise and sell turkeys. Like I have a good friend who's just a couple miles away and he raises lots of turkeys and does really amazing job doing free range pasture raised turkey. Um, and, and so it's like, it's like a more competitive market. And so I'd, I'd be able to charge a lower price and it, like, it kind of like, it doesn't make sense economically versus the geese Nobody does geese. I'm actually officially the largest goose farmer in Vermont at this point. And, and so it, it just, it, it, the economics of it are different and I'm able to raise the geese without using grain. And, and I feel like, like, you know, much like a, a chicken is like duck scale, a goose is like turkey scale. And, and so I don't know, I just, I just, I've always opted more for waterfowl. It's just how I've gone. Um, I don't know. So it, it's not that I haven't thought about it. I've always considered it. It just, it felt like it made more sense to be a little bit unusual in that regard versus just going with like kind of the standard thing of turkeys. 
<laughs> and no, I won't deal with an ostrich. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's Jim Lee. I was I was no. So all right. So so what Sandy is referring to is I was talking about how I was really into the X Men like back in the early nineties and you know, late eighties, early nineties, Jim Lee was like the guy for X-Men. Um, like, in, like his art style. Like if you look at like the X-Men animated series, Jim Lee's art like influenced that more than anything else. Not like, not even close. Um, so, so yes, I know Stan Lee created the series and he and Jack or he and Jack Kirby created the series and, and like he was the original writer but I was, I was specifically referring to Jim Lee. It's noticeable in the farm videos how much time you're spending on the new channel, not just the 30 some feedback. I'm curious what you mean by that. Like, I mean, I, I, I will admit, I'm like, I'm working really hard on those, but I, I don't know. I'm curious to, about what, what you mean there. Wonder why the light, oh, you're saying it's better. I was actually worried it was going to be less good out here. Um, I mean, it, it, the, the modem, like, so we, we have Starlink. That's like how I get the internet here. And the like the starlink dish is above the roof of my office and it runs like just directly down into my office so i would assume it would be better there than here um but it's interesting you say that oh thanks marlene okay i'm st i'm realizing i'm still way behind again Hey, squirrel prepper, squirrely prepper lifestyle. Just popped in to say, hey, good to see you. Okay, how are the bees doing? Um, the bees are doing pretty good. I mean, I, I have two alive hives and I have one dead hive. And I will add more bees uh, later this spring. Um, but yeah, overall, they're doing good. Like, I, I, I will say this. I will never use the flow hive ever again. Like, I'm done with flow hive. Like, I tried it. It was an experiment. It was not for me. Maybe it works great, like in places like Australia, but it does not work in Peach and Vermont, at least based on my experience. How did you get that mini solar on that chicken with another trip to the? Okay, so all right, so what what Mariko is asking is, um, how did I like? So in the April Fool's video that I put out on Monday, I had like a little solar panel on the chicken, and like what I did was I, I basically just made like a little harness, almost like a chicken apron. So it basically it had like a little wire that like wrapped around each of its wings. And so I could just put it like right around that. And then I just hot glued the wire to the solar panel um, and just popped it on. It just, it was fine. Like, and I picked the chicken I picked, it, it was actually one of the friendlier Rhode Island reds who lets me pick her up all the time. And so um, that is how I pulled that one off. Yeah, I know she she uh, she was just there. She just like pounced on. Uh, but yeah, she she's really fun. Yeah, I mean that is, AJ, that is very true too. Like the biosecurity issue of having lots of people coming and going on the farm it creates a whole other level of stuff. So I actually have no plans on showing any of my animals at the fairs. And, and, and the reason is I, I actually am not a big fan of that. Um, not that I like, I don't mean to sound like I'm judging other people and I'm sure for others it's fine. I would just see taking my animals to the fair as a very stressful activity for them. And I just wouldn't want to put them through it or put me through it too, I guess. Um, and, and so that, that is actually why you don't see me doing that. Um, Again, no shade meant to other people. It just it doesn't feel right for me. Okay, Edna, I have a confession to make, and I feel really bad about this. And uh, to the guy who's saying that I was spending all my time on the other channel, um, actually, the one thing that I have, because I've been so focused on some of these creative projects, like writing the book and um, starting the new YouTube channel, 
one thing I slacked on this winter and I will fully admit it and just say, yeah, I just prioritize other things is I still have all of the lard in the freezer and I just haven't had the time or motivation to make soap when I can say, so I really should do it. I will do it. I apologize to the folks who were hoping for me to do it and they wanted to get soap. I've just been, it's just tough because it's like, I, it's fine. Like I, I like making soap. It's kind of fun. It's nice, but like, it's not, I don't know. It's not a passion project per se. And so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I look like I'm getting assimilated by the Borg. Oh, sorry. Look cutest. <laughs> Nephews are good. They're uh, actually uh, going to be visiting the farm very soon. I'm looking forward to it. It's amazing. We're seeing real time how much more you're accustomed to little house cat for over the barn cats. I don't know, Finn. I'm not sure if there's that much of a difference. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Do you find some of your cats cause more allergic reactions than others? Oh, that was actually a good, good follow-up, Rose, to that previous comment. Um, I, I don't really. Like, uh, honestly, I just find that with my cats, I have a tendency to um, pet them and then touch my face. <laughs> we want to try an eclipse, but also it'd be interesting to see. Oh, if you do, uh, let me know because – yeah, it'd be actually fun if we could like almost link up our eclipse videos. I think I think it'd be fun. Like, I I would even actually end my eclipse video. All right, tell you what, it, send me a message on this um, privately. But like, um, yeah, if we can time it out right, like I think it'd be fun to like kind of do like a cross promotional deal. Um, so shoot me a message. I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So yeah, I, yeah. All right, back to the show. <laughs> Can't wait. I know it's going to be fun. We're going to have a, it's so funny. Like we're, we're just shy of like, yeah, baby explosions of May and June that'll be on the farm. It, it, it's always so much fun. What do you think is the next direction for content social media will go in? It's a really good question, Amy. Um, I think a couple of things, uh, you know, and, and I've described this a lot for people over like a couple of years where it's like, I, I see like content going in two directions um, where I think one direction is, you know, what you're already seeing with more mobile short form, purely algorithmic driven content, meaning you're not even necessarily picking what you're watching. You're just, you know, showing up at the mobile trough and like scrolling your way through. And so that's TikTok, that's shorts, that's reels, like it's all that stuff. I think the other direction though things are going in, and this is what I'm experiencing with as I keep diving deeper into the Apple Vision Pro, is like more in-depth and more immersive stuff. And, and one of the things I'm actually considering right now is I'm actually thinking about getting sort of a camera rig, which would let me shoot 3D 180 videos that are like immersive videos, which Honestly, if you watch it on something like a Quest or an Apple Vision Pro, it's like it's an it's an incredible experience. And so I'm not just quite there yet because I know most people don't have the equipment. And so like I'll put something out and like just nobody will care. Um, <clears throat> and 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 so like I think that that is like something I, I see becoming more and more. I think the other factor that happens in all of this is the impact that AI has. And I, I think it'll be good because like, and I'm finding this myself where it like enables creators to do more stuff and different stuff and experiment and, and just, you know, add a whole new level of complexity that like as a solo creator, I, I would never be able to do by myself. Um, but then I think the other issue is, if I'm looking at it from the perspective of like the automated channels and just like automated AI sludge, like I think a lot of that content's going to be up there as well. Hey, congratulations, Mallory, to your husband. Um, he, here's the advice I'd have for anybody who wants to start a YouTube channel or, or like or start, wants to start posting videos. It's like, I think so often people want to do it because they want 
the, like the, the monetary aspect of it, or they want like the attention and recognition and acclaim and the likes and like, like those are the motivating factors. I think the more you can find yourself motivated by the craft and the creation, I think you're going to find the whole experience and everything that comes with it more rewarding because particularly getting started, it can be so challenging to get attention, get recognition, like just make it feel like it's worth your time and effort. And so the more that you can love the process and the more that you can love the creation, it's going to help you get through those tough times. But then simultaneously, that love and that passion and that like how much you're into it, I think it's going to like actually help make your content better. It will probably make it different than other people. And it's going to be the, like some of the factors that actually make you successful. And so in my opinion, um, that that's honestly the biggest thing that you could or should look into doing. Um, so yeah, to, to Mallory's husband, uh, best of luck. <clears throat> hey, Lillian. It's really, yeah, I, I, I've, I've known that for a while. Yeah, it's because they lick and then it's the saliva. I've actually tried things too because I know folks have sent this to me a number of times. Um, uh, and uh, like, like it doesn't work if you try to like feed them eggs or do other things. I've tried the special cat food. I didn't see a noticeable difference. I just find don't touch your face and you should be okay. Um, so yeah. I got suspicious Monday when you mentioned Alfred with that. Okay, here's the thing. And I, I feel like sometimes, I, <laughs> like, all right. So whenever I try to mention Alfred, I usually like to just at least play a note from the song. But sometimes I'll, like, mention him midstream in something. And, I'm like, it's almost, like, distracting when I stop what I'm saying to, like, go play the song for a minute and then go back to what I was saying. And so, so like, like Monday's video, when I did, yeah, I had a quick reference about him. Like, I didn't want to, like, go into a whole song. That, that, that's really all it was. There's no, no reason to be suspicious. Have you ever gone fishing in the South Peachum Brook? Um, no, I haven't. Um, I've never really seen many fish in there. The South Peachum Brook runs through the backside of our farm. Um, and, and so I, it would be very easy for me to do it. Like, um... But yeah, no, I've, I've never uh, gone fishing. It, it is crazy how calm Baby V has gotten. It's, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm super happy about it. I, she might be one of those cows that lets me milk her someday. It's been really good. Like, I've been super excited by the response. The feedback's been good. The sales have been pretty darn good. Like, everything about it, has been a great experience. I I will admit, I didn't love going through Amazon the way I did. And I had some exclusivity agreements. I still have some exclusivity with agreements with them on that one. I might do things differently with this next book. I'm kind of actually carefully exploring some options right now around that. I, I can't say too much more than that. Um, but the, honestly, the whole process of the Toby dog book, I couldn't be happier with, and I'm just really happy and proud of the final product. And, and, uh, honestly, super appreciative of all the support that folks have shown by reading it and, uh, and hopefully liking it. Um, and so, so yeah, I, I feel like it, it's been really good. It's still like, it's funny, like I'll check in like once a week and just see, oh wow, the sales just kind of keep chugging through. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's super, super rewarding. I'm very happy I did it and. It's part of why I rushed right in to write the next one too. Will I consider naming a calf Chester Bennington? I don't know, Mr. I'm not, I've never been a very big Lincoln Park fan, admittedly. Um, so I don't know. The other thing, I let me, I want to get, I'm, if you guys have reactions to this, let me know. I'm very curious. Um, I am considering, uh, I am considering, changing the naming strategy for the steers that are born this year. So typically what I have done in the past is like Joey Ramone and Jimi Hendrix. I, I name them after dead rock stars because you know, they're going to have short lives and you just have to recognize that right from the get go. But another type of person or celebrity that has had short lives are wrestlers. And since Randy Macho Man Savage is, is, the bull, like Randy is the bull. He's the father of all these steers that I'm going to have this year. Um, 
I wonder if I should name them after wrestlers. I, so I'd be curious to get reactions. I, I'm not sure I'm going to do it. It's just it was a thought that I had actually yesterday. Um, and so I'd be curious to get some thoughts and reactions to that. I did. I, I actually, you know what I did? This is the, I didn't videotape this or anything. It's just like a spontaneous moment of joy. I picked up Lil because she's been with me the whole time of writing it. I said, your book is done. Your book is done. And I was like dancing around with her. With it. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> there will be new peach and barn cat merch this year for sure. All right. Pablo shirt, a baby B shirt. Oh God. I am so far behind. I'm sorry guys. I, I, I do really bad. Why are the dogs locked up? At, dogs aren't locked up at night. I mean, so, I mean, the way, the way it's set up is um, like we have the, the main pasture that you guys see, like most of the videos take place in. Um, that's about 10 acres. And Toby and Abby are like 100% able to run around free 24 seven in that whole area uh this time of year like they can go wherever they want um like so so they're not like they're locked in that area but that's i don't know i don't feel like that's locked up if like if a dog's in or two dogs are in 10 acres i don't know that doesn't feel like confinement in my opinion um they have like sheds too that they can go into if they want to get out of the weather so if you heard me say earlier that they're in the shed by their own choice they're probably nestled in piles of straw making little Toby and Abby nests um, to stay all warm and cozy. It's not like they're like locked into the shed. <clears throat> not really, David, um, only because there's like just a, some complexities. If I'm trying to do it commercially, there's some real complexities, um, some changes with insurance and stuff. And then honestly too, like the other thing, like I can't, I can't have any of that content monetized on YouTube. And so I, I wouldn't be able to show it in videos. And so then that would complicate. I don't know. I feel like a lot of kids are watching and I don't, I don't know. I feel like weird about that too. Um, so, so no, I don't have any plans to do that. How do you deal with after snow flooding now? I mean, it just kind of is what it is. Um, you know, the pastures get muddy, like the cattle area gets muddy. I just put down extra straw. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I think, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I, I, I like, it, it's just kind of, it is what it is. Um, and in a lot of like the way our land lies and the way the barns lie, and, and this probably goes back to like the Shaw family 120 years ago, 140 years ago. Um, in that just like most of it is like in a good situation where like, it's not going to get all muddy. So yeah. You know, Anthony, I don't think I would do honey at least anytime soon. Number one, I don't make enough of it. Um, like we make enough to like give to family and friends and keep Allison in honey. But other than that, like I don't see it worth it. Um, if I had more hives, I might. But I don't really consider myself a beekeeper. It, beekeeping is truly something I'm trying to treat like a hobby for myself. Um, and, and so uh, I don't want to expand too much more than say three or four hives. Um, so yeah. Oh, well, thank you, Susan. I really appreciate that. <laughs> All right. You know what, Katrina? So there is a strong chance that if something doesn't happen soon, I might stake out the rat because one thing I've noticed with like, I've got cameras everywhere watching this guy too. Um, he comes out at a very specific time. And so I could easily see setting up with like a 22 and like just waiting for him to pop out. And then, uh, so that would not be, uh, that would not be out of the realm of possibilities. A t-shirt with Toby and Abby. Okay. All right. I, I'm, I'm still brainstorming ideas and working on some things, but yes, uh,
<laughs> I didn't mean it like I forgot. I can tell you. I don't want to say it out loud, but like I can tell you what our anniversary date is. Like this, I, I was just like trying. I was, I was doing trying to do the math in my head is the real answer. I can the date I could just rattle off. It's the how many years ago was it that I struggle with because I I don't do math in public. I have uh, two have a hearts going as we speak. Um, so I am trying that. There will be more Piggly Wiggly soon. <laughs> You're the, wow, urban girl. You might have won comments for the night. <laughs> There's a very good chance that like it's Nicodemus living underneath my shed. I, I I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> I think that's a very fair point you make there, Karen. All right, I'm just going through these. I am, hey, Brad, what's going on? Have you tried using Home Assistant for automating your home? Um, uh, yes, I. there's like a whole bunch of stuff uh, that, that we have set up um, for it. So, so the answer, Brad, is yes. Do you still use the omelet? Okay, so um, what Lisa is asking is, am I still using the weird chicken house? And so the answer is, right now, it's being used as a coop like all of my chickens, my, my full size chickens are using it to lay their eggs and it's working out really good as like a, basically a gigantic luxury nesting boxes. Um, that will change this summer. I actually am not, probably going to move the weird chickens out of that because what I'm thinking about right now is having bean the duck move in with the weird chickens just because I think she will um, do better with them and I'll be able to give her a little bit more care and keep her out of trouble but she won't be able to get up that ramp. Bet the white fluffy chicken, she always has trouble getting up that ramp. Um, <clears throat> and and so um, because of both of those reasons, um, I would say that uh, I'm going to probably build them a new house this year and like a chicken run. Um, and so that will be what happens with the weird chickens. I will use the omelet house though for some other chickens. I'm probably going to separate out my American breast chickens. So the white ones. So um, that is, uh, you know, uh, Barry White plus Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears. And I forget what I named the third one, <laughs> but the third one. Um, and I'll probably keep them separate because I want to breed them and hatch them out for meat birds, hatch their offspring out for meat birds. And so, um, I will probably use that as their house uh, for breeding those chickens as well. Um, so that is that is the current working plan. I I have cracked into the lard for cooking, and I don't know. I might even make a pie or something with it pretty soon. I, so, you know, I I have like a a really good memory for lines and movies and and such and and so like what happens is when I'm editing a video, basically I'll keep playing a soundbite over and over again of like me saying something, and that will trigger something in my head and remind me of something else, and like I'll just basically be free associate free associating while I'm editing, and so then I'm like, oh yeah, that clip from. Uh, uh that episode of the simpsons back in you know 1994 and so i'll like go onto youtube try to find that clip i'm like oh yeah that'll be perfect and i just download it and i cut it in so that's basically how those happen <clears throat> yeah that's okay all right so 15 28 so that's like 3 30 ish okay yeah that's 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 what i thought it was something like that and so so for those wondering about the video imagine that i shoot like I'll, I'll shoot some stuff in the beginning. Um, but at like three 30, I will shoot that video. I'll try to get as many different animal reactions. I'll have a bunch of cameras set up. Then I need to take all that footage and cut it. I'm going to guess probably about seven or eight o'clock at night will be when that video gets posted. Uh, 
awesome. Be, I think that'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> I I haven't watched WrestleMania or any like wrestling I in years, um, years and years. Like uh, I, you know, it's funny actually. One of my best friends, who's like you know, been one of my best friends since I was like ten years old, nine years old. Um, he every once in a while comes to the hang out and hang out for a weekend. And like, we might like watch an old old like, WrestleMania from like nineteen eighty eight. Um, that would be actually much more likely what we'd watch. I, I don't follow any wrestling these days. Oh, Shmuel, th- thank you for the donation. Very very kind of you. I, you know what, Ramen? I, I, I don't think you're wrong. I think I'm going to call it. Um, but I really do appreciate everybody coming out and hanging out tonight. And uh, there will be a new video tomorrow um, all about the snowstorm that we got last week. Um, and then, like I said, Monday's video will be posted, but it'll be later than usual because uh, we're going to be uh, doing the spe- Eclipse special. So uh, thanks for hanging out tonight. Thank you again to all my moderators, uh, Rose at Wholesome Roots, Katrina over at Sew and Tear, Jack at the Mindful Homestead, Danny at Wicked Awesome Gardening. Like, seriously, guys, go check them out. Say hello. This would not be possible without them. Um, Much love to all of them and to all of you guys, and I hope you have an outstanding night.